This game has been out for a few years, so I'll just get right to the point. Onslaught Containment is the best mode for grinding weapon XP. If you want to find out why or how to make this mode and Outbreak 3 region more efficient, stick around because I went in and tested the two most popular strategies and gathered data on these modes both solo and while playing with others to break down the fastest way to get weapon XP. And before we get into the statistics, I'll explain how each of these methods work. First, let's start with Outbreak. This is my preferred method in what I've used the last few years during our open lobby stream. And I only really recommend doing the three region outbreak then restarting because after the third region the weapon xp you get per zombie kill drops off significantly as for the field upgrade i recommend using tesla storm because it's a decent oh shit button and it's a good way to get some extra points but it's not necessary to make this method work and you can basically use whatever you want but basically for this method you just need to get as many kills as possible and the most effective way to get more spawns is to take advantage of the world events the main world event that you want to look out for is the black chest event this is is by far the best event for grinding. Once you activate the chest, tickle the three little balls and run like hell. If you don't run out of the range of these orbs, they can easily stack damage on you and knock you on your ass. And if you run far enough away, the orbs can't deal damage, but the zombie spawns will still follow you. Once you get that done, now all you gotta do is sit back and grind out kills, but make sure you don't break the orbs until all the spawns stop. This event's also pretty decent for getting set up because upon completion, you get a pack a punch chalice, armor, and a little bit of scrap. The order event is also pretty decent and for getting zombie spawns. This one's pretty simple. You just shoot order enough to piss him off, but don't kill him right away. After you rile him up, he'll trot after you swinging his meat around, but this is where he'll start periodically spawning in zombies. But basically you gotta do the same thing as the black chest event and just kill all the zombies that spawn in until the spawns stop, and then you can beat Orda's ass. The crystal event has some pretty decent spawns, but it's pretty short compared to the previously mentioned events. Once you shoot the initial crystal, the spawns will start rolling in and all you gotta do is kill the zombies. You can also just shoot all the crystals for an Aether Wrench to give your weapon a free tier upgrade, which can be pretty useful for a mode that doesn't have the highest salvage drop rates. Other events spawn in more zombies than you'd find just roaming around the map, but aren't as notable as the ones listed previously. But if you get a main event that has you pick up an Aether Canister, don't return it right away. Hang on to one of them until the timer for the event is close to running out to get the most out of the spawns. On some maps, you can basically spawn trap the zombies just by watching where they come from. You just gotta track them back to their spawn and you can just sit there and rack up kills. This is one of the best ways to get a lot of kills in Outbreak. But basically with almost any event in Outbreak, hold off on completing the objective for as long as you can to maximize zombie spawns. Additionally, once you've completed all three regions, take your time getting to the exfil location. You'll get a ton of zombie spawns in between the beacon and the exfil, but the second you step foot in the exfil location, it'll give you a set number of zombies to take out before Raptor 1 can land. But the short and sweet of this method is just to kill as many zombies as you can and take your time doing the events. Now on to Onslaught Containment. For the most popular strat on this mode, you gotta queue until you get the map U-Bond. Other maps could work, but this one is the most straightforward. And for your field upgrade, you wanna grab Grab toxic growth. Once there, go through the first few surges however you want until you've charged up your fuel upgrade. Then head over to this staircase area on either end of the map. It doesn't matter which one you use, but I use the one with the peace sign on it. Head all the way to the back of this area and start placing your toxic growths in front of you. All the zombies will come at you from straight ahead, so placing your toxic growths like this will slow the zombies down, allowing you time to kill them before they get to you and give you ample time to reload. During the elite surges, I recommend moving out of your spot because most elites will tank right through your toxic growth bushes and destroy destroy their durability. It's also not a bad idea to pick up some of the kill streaks that drop to get through these elite surges faster. This strat works great for the first 30 surges, but for surges above this, zombies might get through a bit easier. This is where I'd switch to Ring of Fire for your field upgrade and train around until you got it charged up, and once it's charged, you can head back to your little area and pop it. There also, to my knowledge, isn't a fall off in XP per zombie kill in Onslaught, so go as far as you can and rinse and repeat. Now that we got the methods out of the way, let's go over my stats from trying this out myself starting with Outbreak. First and foremost, let me just start this out by apologizing to anyone that attempted this strategy solo because of my recommendation. Anyways, I went into testing this method solo with a level 1 LC10. And after completing my first game of 3 region Outbreak, we came out of it with 90,220 score, 1,265 kills, 527 crits, and went down once. This game took me an hour and 9 minutes and I walked away with my LC10 at level 22. Not a terrible outing, but it'll get worse from here. Here. In our second game, I posted a pretty similar stat line, getting my LC10 up to level 32 in the process. Now, if you don't know, weapon levels past level 30 require much more XP per level to rank up, so just keep that in mind. But after that game, it took me five more full games of three region outbreak, getting an average of only five levels per game with each game taking 
around 50 minutes. So in total, it took me seven games, 7,609 kills, 3,200 crits, 21 total regions in a whopping six hours and seven minutes to get my LC10 from level one to 55. And I also unlocked gold viper on it before reaching max level. Now, obviously this is extremely inefficient, but things change dramatically when playing with others. But just to be specific here, what I mean by others is the people I was playing with were on my friends list, not just random people in matchmaking. I was also playing on a PlayStation, which due to a deal with Call of Duty, all PlayStation players who play together in a party receive an extra 25% bonus to weapon XP. However, if you're playing on another platform with other people, you will still gain more XP than you would solo, just to make that clear. So I went into testing this method with a level one carve two and a party of people. For my first game playing with the party, we got fucked up and died pretty early into the second region. However, I still got the carve two up to level 14 with only 269 kills and 83 crits. I also had six revives this game and I'm not sure if that would factor into weapon XP, but I figured I'd mention it just because it's something that I couldn't do during the solo games. I played two more full games of three region outbreak. So in total out of the three games I played, I got my carve two from level one to 51 all while just getting 2,450 kills, 779 crits, 12 revives, five downs, eight total regions, all in only two hours and seven minutes. Compared to our solo testing, every single stat is just a fraction of what we had to do while playing on our own. I also did not unlock Gold Viper during this grind, which is why this is my preferred method for leveling up weapons while still leaving some camos for me to unlock during videos. Trying to level up weapons solo in Outbreak is completely non-viable unless you're a masochist with a self-punishment fetish. Now let's take a look at our stats from Onslaught Containment. For the solo testing, I went into it with a level 1 MP5. In our first game, I survived 58 surges, 19 of those being elite surges, with 106,535 score, 2,936 kills, and 1,659 critical kills. This got my MP5 from level 1 to 30 in only an hour and two minutes. I played four more games of Onslaught Containment after this, so in total for five five games, it took 203 surges, 65 of those being elite surges, 7,606 kills, 4,650 crits, and 3 hours and 18 minutes to get our MP5 from level 1 to 55. We also unlocked Golden Viper on it before reaching max level. For our dual onslaught containment testing, I went into it with a level 1 MAC-10. In our first game, we survived 40 surges, 13 of those being elite surges, with 1,137 kills and 381 crits. This got my MAC-10 from level 1 to 31 in just 34 minutes. That is the fastest time we've seen yet for that kind of XP gain. In the two games following this, the weapon levels we received dropped in half each game. That might sound bad, but check this out. We gained 30 levels in our first game, 16 levels in our second game, and 7 levels in game 3, getting us up to level 54 on our MAC-10. Technically, we did hit level 55 in game, but for whatever reason, it reset us back to 54 when we got back to the main menu. I don't know why this happens, but it's just a stupid ass glitch, so just be aware of it in case it happens to you. But anyways, our total stats for these three games had us at 3,945 kills, 2,012 crits, six revives, again, in case those play into weapon XP at all, six downs, and 112 surges, 36 of those being elite. And this only took us an hour and 35 minutes. Also, during this grind, I did not unlock Gold Viper on the MAC-10, but I was close, only needing around 600 more critical kills to unlock it. If we compare our solo and duo onslaught containment stats, the duo game blows the solo out of the water, cutting basically every metric in half. Now, if we compare both our solo tests, it's not even close. Onslaught containment is three hours faster despite having almost the same exact number of kills. On top of this, it's statistically much easier to get critical kills doing this strategy over Outbreak with a difference of 1400 crits. Where things get closer is when we compare both modes while playing with other people. Onslaught Containment has Outbreak beat time-wise, but it's only by a half hour, which is a decent chunk of time, but compared to the multiple hour-long gaps in our solo testing, it's not too terrible. But in Outbreak, it takes almost 1,500 less kills to get a weapon leveled up, as well as 1,200 less crits. So to sum it up, if you don't care how many camos you're unlocking and just want to get your weapon leveled up as fast as possible, hop into Onslaught Containment with a friend and not 
knock it out. If you'd rather have your weapon leveled up, then go grind the camos out in round based or something similar, Outbreak with Friends is the mode for you. And if you don't have anyone to play with, you can leave your Activision ID in the comments below or join my Discord through the link in the description and head on over to the Zombies Looking for Game Chat. And we only went over what I believe to be the two best weapon XP methods in this video, but if you want to see me take an in-depth look at other modes such as round based or multiplayer, let me know and I might make a video on it. But that's all I got for today. If this helped you or you learned something new, like the video. And if it didn't help you and you didn't learn shit, dislike. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.